What do you think of when you imagine a 2001 computer? Maybe a beige gateway or a compact desktop with a large LCD monitor? What if I told you there was an IBM desktop that broke all the rules of design in the computer world and was years ahead of its time? Okay, maybe not years ahead of its time, but it still is really cool. Hello, it is Pixel Weekly, back with another video, and this time we're taking a look at the IBM NetVista X41 All-in-One. This thing cost around $1,500 when it first came out, and was primarily used as a business PC. Its unique shape and absolutely tiny form factor definitely made it an eye-catcher, and also contributed to its hefty price tag. The design itself looks to me like a big-headed dog looking up at something, but that's just me. I remember even as a kid looking at this thing and constantly being afraid it would just break off its base and fall over. And it weighs nearly 26 pounds, almost 12 kilos, so it wasn't such an irrational fear. It hasn't toppled over yet, so I guess the designers knew what they were doing. Except on some things, it didn't seem like they knew what they were doing at all. Like the optical drive, it pops down from the computer whenever you need to use it, but it only works when the computer's on, not just connected to power, on. I honestly don't know if this is a safety feature or what, but it doesn't make any sense to me. It seems like things like that would be mechanical, but I guess I'm not the one who designed this computer. It's got a mostly plastic build apart from the rigid metal inner structure, and has a 15 inch 4x3 aspect ratio LCD that is integrated into the computer. Honestly, I'm not even going to go too in depth about how the LCD looks. I'm just going to say it's pretty bright and not too bad looking for a computer from 01. Because of the small form factor, it comes with some downsides. It doesn't have an integrated power supply, it actually comes with an extremely large 160 watt power brick. This thing is enormous. Compare that to my Dell power supply and you'll see how huge it really is. Albeit, my power brick is only 45 watts, but it still amazes me. As for the IOs, this thing is actually pretty impressive. It has 6 USB 1.0 ports, a parallel port, a headphone out, a microphone in, an audio in, a mouse and keyboard port, and a few wired internet enabling ports. I was really surprised to see how many USB ports there were. I was also unpleasantly surprised to see there, there was no video out on this thing. I know it was made in 01, but the computer, based on the specs, should have been powerful enough for a video out. No VGA, no DVI, nothing. It's really bad for a business computer. Speaking of specs, here they are. Get ready, these are some mind-blowingly awesome specs. Okay, just kidding. It has a Pentium 4 single core at 1.6GHz, 128 megabytes of RAM, and a 20GB hard drive. And for 01 and the small form factor, this really wasn't too bad at the time. Of course, now these specs are just laughable. When I first saw 1.6GHz on the About PC page, I was pleasantly surprised, until I figured out that the Pentium 4 was a single core processor. Single core processors are just not acceptable nowadays, especially for higher end computers. Having only 128 megabytes of RAM really makes the computer agonizing to navigate. And I would try to upgrade it, but as you see here, there isn't much access to the inside. There are two main panels that come off. The first one really only shows you the rear end of the I.O. ports and some cables. The second panel doesn't really show you much either. And I really don't want to do a disassembly of this thing, because there are a lot of memories tied to it, and I really don't want to hurt or ruin anything inside. It's such a unique machine, I wouldn't even know how to start. With all that said, this computer is absolutely slow. A combined 5 years of use and 11 years of storage have done some bad things to this guy. It usually takes anywhere from a minute to 4 minutes to get started up, and even then you have to wait another 4 minutes for all the pop-ups of AIM and Yahoo Instant Messenger to load enough to be closed. I know that part isn't necessarily the computer's fault, it's mostly my older sister's fault for having an AIM and a Yahoo Instant Messenger, why use both? Anyway, this computer has actually taught me to just slow down and be patient for a second while it loads for simple things like settings and the file manager. I refuse to even attempt to hook up Ethernet to this thing. It would just be agonizing to both the computer and me as I wait to see if it'll ever load Google's homepage. This computer is really making me appreciate that even the 4 gigs of RAM that my laptop has today, and the dual core processor it has, and the terabyte hard drive it has, and the wireless internet capabilities it has, and the display it has, and the operating system in it is Windows XP 2002 and it really brings back some memories. It's simple enough to navigate and pretty fun to use. I gotta say it's very unfortunate that Microsoft stopped supporting it. It really suits PCs well and I sometimes wish that Windows 10 was a bit more like it. XP also has some pretty cool features like the beloved and nostalgic 3D pipe screensaver and the hilly background. Those things bring back a lot of memories. Windows XP is also really easy to customize. Just a few clicks and you already have a new and unique pointer or background. I wish it was that easy nowadays. Now to some more hardware related stuff. This PC is loud and I do not blame it for that. Not only is it 16 years old, it's also really tightly packed together, so it's going to heat up whether you like it or not. I'd compare the fan noise to about the volume of a microwave when it's cooking something. 
weird comparison, I know, but it really is about how loud it is. And one more thing, it might only be our model, but I think it has more than one hard drive. When it first got out of storage, it wouldn't boot to the OS, and after a while of tinkering with it, my buddy and I found that it had just been trying to boot to the wrong hard drive for who knows how long, and that's why it stopped working. I don't know if it has two hard drives with 10 gigs on them each, or if this thing has more than 20 gigabytes on it. Another weird thing is when I go to File Manager, it only shows one hard drive. This entire thing just weirds me out. Anyway, overall this thing is pretty cool back in 01 and even now. Seeing it just how much we've improved in only 16 years is awesome to me. You can get a laptop with better specs for as little as $150 with Windows 10 on it. Windows XP is extremely nostalgic and also easy to navigate. While it may not have been a future-proof machine, I had a lot of fun working on it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and stay tuned for more Bixel Weekly. With all that said, this computer is absolutely slow. A combined 5 years of use and 11 years of storage done some bad things to this guy. It usually takes anywhere from a minute to 4 minutes to get started up, and even then you have to wait an- yeah. I was recording- You this didn't say- I freaking- this is- I